Merry Christmas, Canada. These pictures made sure it was not. Our economy and unleashed our people to pursue their ambitions and realize their limitless potential. The market clearly isn't paying attention to impeachment. It's looking at the economic data and powering ahead, I think, through the rest of the year. I've always acknowledged that I come from a place of privilege, but I now need to acknowledge that that comes with a massive blind spot. Boris Johnson, the outspoken British Prime Minister, compared by some to his American ally, Donald Trump, this morning enjoying a stunning re-election victory. Don Cherry made remarks which were hurtful, discriminatory, uh, which were flat out wrong. Paris is literally burning. Massive protests over pension reform going on in France right now. Police firing tear gas as France's high-speed rail halts, Eiffel Tower closes. Uh, we know diversity is the strength of the country. Uh, we see it in the travels with our show and with Hockey Night in Canada. And they voted in favor of a progressive agenda and strong action on climate change. Hello there and Merry Christmas. This is Andrew Says. I wouldn't lie to you except for maybe this once. I'm here with Austin Matthews, my special guest. We've got our mugs full of cocoa. We've got our Homer Simpson slippers on. We want to talk to you about some predictions for Canada in 2020. The Great White North, True North Strong and Free, Cuck Canada, whatever you want to call us, we've got something to say. As the world leaves us behind in terms of freedom, We've got many great things to look forward to in 2020 to increase our love or, um, seriously, what do we have to look forward to? Great things like giving the government of Canada more of your money, or you could just bypass them and give it directly to me. The first thing you have to look forward to in Canada in 2020, Austin, is the government taking down your social media posts for hate speech. Did you dare to mention Alex Jones in a non-derogatory form? Did you dare debate somebody on their gender identity? Well, you better believe that's hate speech. The Minister of Canadian Heritage, which is apparently a thing, has declared that social media platforms must remove anything that is against the law within 24 hours or face harsh penalties. And that includes hate speech, my friends. Hit him with the gavel, Austin. Now, maybe we won't get to the point that they're in in the UK or in Germany right now where police will actually come to your house if you say something that they don't like online. But, who knows? Property taxes are on the rise across the country, and with that, we can come to our second prediction of more taxes. In addition to property taxes, back in September, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said that Canada is well on its way to meeting the markers set by the Paris Climate Accord Agreement that are required by 2030. Now, however, and chime in on this if you'd like, Austin, studies are now showing that Canada would need to increase its carbon tax to at least $210 per ton in order to meet those Paris Climate Agreement markers. Now if you believe that Justin Trudeau's minority government is going to be able to increase the carbon tax by more than four times what it originally said it would cap out at, then <laughs> uh, good for you? But more likely, that's going to result in what, Austin? Higher income taxes. My third prediction for Canada in 2020 as we sit in front of this lovely fire with superstar Austin Matthews, is Canadian media is going to change. You're going to see more investment in alternative Canadian media voices. Now, we don't have a Fox News here. The closest thing we have is Rebel News, and that's still only a couple million YouTube subscribers. It's nowhere near the reach or the influence that a Fox News has in the United States. But whether it's post-millennial, Rebel News, or True North, or something like that, you're going to see more alternative voices, channels, and personalities pop up in the Canadian news media sphere, unless you're a flat earther, Austin, pop up in 2020. You're going to see them get into more infotainment and man-on-the-street stuff, a lighter tone like you would see from Fleckus Talks or the partnership between Blaze Media and Slightly Offensive, or something like PragerU or Daily Caller. Whether it's more entertaining or man-on-the-street stuff or podcasts, you're going to see them do it. Why? Everybody always steals my ideas, Austin. It's, it's part of being, you know, a trailblazer. 
And perhaps more importantly, with Canada being perhaps the last country with progressive leadership and an opposition that's currently without a leader in the Conservative Party, you're probably going to see way more division before you see more unity. But that's why we need to see more alternative voices in the Canadian news media, like Austin and I here, who are willing to go out and speak to people and kind of bridge the gap in a more entertaining way that speaks to fence sitters, swing voters, and people who aren't generally interested in politics. Why, how can they help us, Austin? Well, there's Patreon. There's reading stuff on the New Right Network. I'm not doing an X for any particular reason. Of course you can like and subscribe to this channel and share videos from this one and my other channel Andrew Does, which will have more Man on the Street videos in 2020 and beyond. 2019 has come and gone, Austin. Another year of YouTube censorship and social media deplatforming and shadow banning. But we won't let that stop us, will we, Austin? I think he said no. This mic's not even on. More of the Canadian media being completely one-sided and disconnected from the common person. What we need in 2020 is more people coming together, more voices, more people to get what we want. Freedom, I thought.